In today's tutorial, let's learn how to do a Caltech knot square. You can use this concept for either dish class or if you don't do the final round, you can also use the same concept in order to do squares if you want to use these in an afghan. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to learn how to do a Celtic knot dishcloth but again you can use this for a square. If you'd like to do an afghan you just don't do the final round because the final round makes it almost impossible to join to a neighbor. So I'm using cotton yarn today. It's the Lily Sugar and Cream. If you're in Canada it'd be Bernat Handy Crafter and basically this is actually not a uh, hard pattern to work with. The most complicated part of it is the rings and making sure that you're not putting rings in backwards. Uh, they work independently of each other. You can see right in the middle they're not actually attached to each other to each other. They're kind of woven with each other as far as the way that you have placed them and I'm gonna be showing you tips that are not in the instructions for you to be able to be successful right from the very start. So let's begin to do some of the tips first. So let's begin to go through some of the instructions first on the tips. So you're looking at this photo. Which one is ring number one, two, three, and four? I have put this on here. This is ring number one. This is ring number two, ring number three, and ring number four. Sometimes it helps to visualize on how they're woven together. You will notice that this ring actually is overlapping two of the other rings just like so. So when you go to look at it, this would be how it would look like. You can see that this ring here is overlapping the other two. So it becomes fairly easy in order to be able to maintain that. The reason why I'm showing you the order of one, two, three, and four is that what we're going to do is that we're going to be using stitch markers. In my case, I'm just going to use some spare yarn and I'm going to start laying out how the, how the rings go together. I found that when I was doing this in the, in the tutorial uh, prototype is that I realized that one of my rings was upside down because I was kind of looking at it and it matters which direction that you're going around the center uh, um, chain. So I happen to go around backwards on one so it made one of the rings appear upside down. So what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to get you started and then I'm going to be using a stitch marker and I'm going to be placing the stitch marker down on uh, between two rings so that it actually forms the rings to be together. So when you're ready to go for the, uh, the border area you're going to go a lot faster because you've already got the stitches. I also figured out in the pattern it says to count over to the 35th stitch when it comes to doing the rings. I'm not going to tell you to do that today. What I figured out is that in one direction we're going to skip over a number of stitches and in one direction we're going to skip over to another. So it'll say skip over a certain amount and then the next one skip 35 stitches. Well I just went backward. I counted backward from here to there in order to make it a lot faster in order to work out. So that's what you kind of see is going on. So today we're going to be using a size I 5 millimeter crochet hook today. The pattern is free which I'm going to provide and we're going to work step by step. So we're going to work on ring number one and then the next ring will go inside that ring. The next ring will go inside ring number two and then ring number four will go in between one and three. So um, let's begin and I'm going to try to go as slow as possible but also teach you how to do it at the same time. So we're about to begin ring number one and ring number one is down here. I can see by the photos, see how this one is overlapping too? So I can see that this here is ring number one. Now where we start our, pro our, our chain and where we come all the way back around is exactly where you're going to be doing um, the joining to the corner. So whenever you're working with these rings, always the corners are always the start and stop of your rings and that makes it very easy to follow. You will need a darning needle today in order to hide in your ends especially if you're using this as a dishcloth but of course this could be very ornamental at the same time. Let's begin ring number one and I want to create a slip knot and using your size I 5 millimeter crochet hook just insert into the the slip knot and remember that never counts as one. So that's part of the instructions and this is how we're going to do all of the rings. So they're all the same but it's when you get rings two, three, and four it's how you join it when it comes to making the full circle that makes a difference. So let's all chain 20. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
18, 19 and 20. Being ring number one we can cer certainly just go back right to the very beginning chain and let's just grab our yarn and pull through for a slip for a slip stitch and that will form your ring. So the whole ring that we're going to be working on will work around this chain. So let's begin our first revolution. There's only one rev revolution around these chains. So the first one we're going to chain three. So one, two, th three. Remember in the rules of crochet that counts as a double crochet and then it's asking you to do 43 double crochets around the center ring. So you see this uh, straggler right here? Just make sure it looks like it's part of it and then you're just gonna crochet exactly around that chain plus the straggler for a total of 43 times and with that chaining of three in the start you should have a total of 44 when you're done. So you just continue to do that. I'm gonna leave that for you so make sure that you just double crochet 43 times after the chain and then with the chain it's a total of 44 when you're done. So please do that and I'll meet you back up in just a moment. So I have a total of 43 double crochets with the chaining of three that makes it 44. So you see that there's a little bit of a space left. You might have uh, no space left at all. You might have to squeeze everything. That'll balance out. There's some tight areas in amongst this so don't worry about it. Now what you have to pay, be paying attention is make sure that this is not all twisted up before you go to join it and you just join it to the top of the beginning chain three. So this is how you would do it for all of them as far as um, finishing off. So I'm going to just do a slip stitch and everything will be balanced. I'm not even gonna worry about that at this moment. So I'm just going to cut my yarn and I'm gonna show you how to fasten off so or to be able to finish it off and I just wanna grab the yarn and pull through just like so. Now if you're using this for like a dishcloth you're really gonna wanna take care of your loose ends and I would do it at the same time of doing each one of the rings. So I'm only gonna show how to finish this off once because all the rings are the same. So I'm just gonna simply go in the same direction from which I came underneath the stitches. The cotton yarn is very durable so just make sure you be very careful with your your needle and, and I want you to go through underneath the stitches for one coming back under a different section for two and then going back into the same direction as before for three. So when you go three times it prevents it from ever falling out in the future. So now I can safely cut that yarn right down and what I wanna really pay attention to at this point is which side is my right side and which side is the wrong side because I made a mistake with my first one. So I'm gonna just start sliding things down into position. So just move things down. It'll just all work out and then it will be really well hidden at this point. So don't worry about that. So you just have to say which side is up and what side's down. This is the good side so this side is gonna face up. This is the bad side. Do you see the difference? So you gotta make sure that when you're working with this if you're gonna do all the bad sides up then you do it all that way but I want you to concentrate on getting the good side, the right side to be up at this point. So where we joined and let me show you how to uh, put a stitch marker in because it's gonna matter. So it doesn't say to do this in the instructions but I'm going to recommend that you do this. So that where we joined is the middle. Okay so this will be a corner of your your square. So what I want you to do is that I want you to count over to the tenth one on the one side. So this is um, this is the middle. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten and I want you to slip in your hook into the stitch and grab your stitch marker and I want you to mark it. So I want you to just to pull through that stitch with this other yarn. Just kind of mark it so it stays there. So don't pull it too tight. It's just there for representation. And then going back in the other direction I want you to go to the tenth one as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. And again slip in your hook. Grab your stitch marker. Use a color that's opposite or different from what you're using. It makes it easier to follow. So basically what I'm doing here is that you will notice in the squares we are attaching to the corner of the square here and then these two represent where they're kind of attach on the border. Okay so if this was a square number one right here so what I'm doing is that I'm marking this stitch over here and I'm marking this stitch down here so I don't need to count afterward and I can actually keep an eye on my pattern when I'm going along. So let's uh, get this just put this aside for now and we're going to start ring number two. 
Okay, let's begin ring number two. I'm just leaving this really close by because we are going to need it in just a few minutes. So I want you to create another slip knot and I want you to create another chain 20 ring but I don't want you to finish off that ring by making it a full circle with a slip stitch. So let's do it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Okay, so 17, what am I doing? 18, 19, and 20. So here we go, we have our 20. But before I finish it off, I wanna make sure it goes into this center ring. So if I'm looking at my project, okay, look at it from this point of view. So look at it from, this is the corner right here. See the, see where it is? So I got one up here and I got one down here and this is the middle of the, of the dishcloth. What I want to do is that I want to insert Okay, I want to insert like this coming that other chain coming in from the underside and pulling it through there and then with this part here is that I want to form it with the ring. Okay, so just put in there and just grab our yarn and create the slip stitch. So I'm not doing this too smoothly at this point I have to say but I just want to just pull through. Okay, so now it looks like it's just about to loop the other side which is good. So now let's create this part of the ring and what we have to be very conscientious of is that we're moving in the right direction. So if I for example go like this, okay see how this is the wrong side and I start crocheting uh, around here. What's going to happen is that it's going to put the ring on backwards. So what I want to do is I wanna make sure that this front side is facing me and I want to start moving down the chain going with it facing me. So let's begin. We're going to chain three and we're simply just gonna grab the straggler just put it like we did before and we're going to double crochet 43 times. Okay. So when I did it on my tutorial sample I just uh, did this and I accidentally went in the wrong direction and therefore the ring was actually upside down and I did not notice until I was ready to do the border and I realized I had a ring that was upside down that I couldn't be able to take, uh, do anything with it. So I had to take, take apart one ring and redo it right from scratch. So I want you to get 43 double crochets uh, with the chaining of three it should be 44 and just move things down and you will notice that it will slip and eventually slip down underneath here and then when we come back I'll show you some tricks. Okay, I've just done my total of 43 double crochets and with the chaining of three it makes it 44. So I'm going to fasten off like I just did and what you can actually tell is that if you put it like this you can see that the front sides are both actually facing you so you don't have something. Now what if I said that it was like this? I don't want you to do that. I want you to have the configuration just like you see it on the screen here and when we come back I'm gonna fasten this off like it did before. Um, I just don't need to show you again and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you a technique on being able to speed up the process because I'm gonna show you that you can do a little secret right here. This is not in the pattern. Okay, so here's what it looks like at this point and I've got it in the configuration of this is uh, circle number one or ring number one and I got the one stitch marker up here. This is the corner and here is the one at the bottom. So what I want you to do is that this ring here you can clearly tell which is the starting and stopping. It's right here and again things will adjust and eventually it'll get better hidden than what it looks like right now but you do wanna see it so you don't wanna get that confused. So let's get our stitch markers out and I only need one this time and watch what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna go back to where I started and how many do we need to skip? We need to skip uh, total uh, over to 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Slip in your hook and let's do a stitch marker. So why do we only need one stitch marker this time? Because the other one is already technically there and let me show you the, the secret to that. So I was thinking about this in my sleep last night so this is why I'm doing it this way. So this here represents where it would be attaching to a neighbor. So do you see how the two rings attach right at the bottom here? So what I want to do is uh, that basically is going to be the representation right down here. So what I wanna do is that I want to just make a note where this is and just count over 10. So coming back to the start on the ring, on the second ring, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, and 10. Okay, and I wanna slip in my hook from the underside this time. And I want to come over and just kind of manipulate things and coming up to the, so here's the configuration. Okay, this is not part of it. I wanna keep that out of the way. So this is ring number one. So this side will be up, this side will be down. And this time what I want to do on this one is put the ring or put the stitch marker coming up here. Okay. So I know that's kind of confusing but just watch me, just bear with me here. I'm gonna take the stitch marker out that was already there and I wanna put it through both of them this time. So pulling it through both. Okay, so basically this is what it looks like at this point. So you have your base here, you have the ring, this is ring number one still, this is your outside. This here is the corner for ring number two and this is the outside up here. So by just going through the bottom like I did, I was just ma making sure that it would sit properly. So the ring number two on here, ring number one goes over ring number two if that makes any sense. You may need to play around with this if this is not making any sense. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. It's easier to do it now than it is to do it later and have a ring upside down. So let's uh, carry on to ring number three. Let's begin ring number three by starting with the slip knot of course and remember what it was. It's chain 20 so they're all the same. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. 19 and 20. So before we finish the ring we have to bring our project back Okay, so here it is. So see now that it's attached at the bottom. I know where that bottom is. When the rings are not attached when you're when you're going to do this you can get confused really easily. So that's my whole point. So this time what I want to do is that I wanna shift it so it looks like this and I want to bring my project from the underside okay and through. So this is ring number two. So bring it from the back side and bring it forward and then just insert into the first stitch for a slip stitch. Okay and so now I'm ready to begin this ring again. See where the front side is? It's facing me so I wanna make sure that I go in this direction in order to maintain that. So we're gonna chain three and then go around the ring. Make sure you get the straggler in there and go around the ring for 43 double crochets once again. And when we come back I'll have that done and then I'll show you where to position your stitch markers for the next part. So this is ring number three. I'm just finishing it up. I have 43 double crochets plus my chain of three which gives a total of 44. So I'm just finishing up as normal and I'm going to do that off camera and when I come back I'm gonna show you where to put the stitch markers once again because this is ring number three. So let's do that. So let's begin to manipulate this once again and right now this still is ring number one that we started with here and this is ring number two and I can tell that because the fact is that they're joined together with this, this stitch marker over here. So this one is not attached to anything therefore that's ring number three. When you don't attach them like I was doing this is when you get confused on what ring is what when it goes to refer it to the instructions. So this is what I would recommend. So what I want to do is ring number three I want to find it where I started which is right here and I wanna do the same thing with the last stitch marker and I want to go in the direction of this, this direction here. So I wanna count over 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 and let's slip in our hook and grab our stitch marker. Just like so. So the other stitch marker then will be back and it will grab two rings on the other side. So let's go back in the other direction. So basically this is what it would look like at this point. Okay, you see that these two are together. This is ring number three. Okay, ring number three. Here is the corner of that ring which would attach to the corner of the square. So what I wanna do is I wanna count over 10 in this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 and just slip the hook from behind just like so and I want you to go to this stitch marker right here. Okay, so the other one, the other side of the stitch marker is attached to two rings. This one is not attached to anything else so I want you to slip in the hook first and then take out that stitch marker. Okay, and I want you to pull it through both of those and replace it down. 
I'm telling you this is a lot simpler I, I have to say. Okay, so now what I have here is that you can see that the three rings are now attached together just like you see. So they're here and here and now it's time for ring number four and ring number four is when we start going through two loops at the same time. So let's uh, begin to do that next. So here's the final ring. Let's start off with the slip knot and you know how to do these rings already and let's just get ourselves to 21st. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So you will notice in ring number four according to the pattern when you look at it ring number four goes over two of the other rings that are in the diagonal. So it goes over ring number three and ring number one. Okay, do you see that right here? So right, right in the middle. So what we wanna do is that we can see here the way that we have it attached is that this is ring number one, this is ring number three. So when I go to put this around here is that I want to make sure that I'm gonna go in the right direction. So the easiest way to do this um, at this point is that I want you to look at it from this point of view. So ring number one, ring number three and I want you to grab your chain. Okay and I want you to lay it over top of ring number three and ring number one and just come around the back. Okay so just drag it around the back like so. You see that? So rings number one and three are still on top. Okay, so it doesn't do anything with ring number two. And then I want you to fast, I want you to do the slip stitch. Okay, and just pull it through. So the biggest deal that you have here is you have to make sure you go in the right direction. This is where I screwed up on my last tutorial, on my sample. So see how you're looking at the project and ring number two is down here. I want you to turn this project so that you're looking at it from the back side like so. And there's a reason why I'm telling you to do this because what's gonna happen is that this ring here the way that it's gonna go is going to fall forward okay onto the other rings. So if I go in this direction for example what's going to happen is that I still need it to fall forward but then the right side will be facing down. So just turn it so that ring number two is the furthest away from you and you're looking at the back side of your project and just chain up your three, one, two and three and do your 43 double crochets around. And I'll be back in just midpoint just to show you illustrate why, what I'm talking about as far as why you're turning it the way you are. So now come all the way back around. I'm going to just fasten off like I did before and I'm just gonna weave in your end. So a ring number two is still furthest away from me so it looks like I've basically got this ring in upside down because all the other rings you can see the back side but this one is not. The reason for that is because when I go to sit this down this ring is actually going to sit forward like this. Did you see that? So I'm going to show you that in just a moment but it's actual fact it looks like it's upside down but it's the way that it's going to sit with the rest of it that will actually be upside right. So I've just fastened off as normal so that you see that I can see the back sides of all the three rings except for this side. Let me turn it around. So basically you see the three rings and you see that the front sides are facing up which is right but then this one appears to be backwards but here's the thing it's not sitting right. So what you have to just do is just bring it down okay and rotate it. Okay, so it's just a matter of actually just changing the way that you're looking at it. See, so you turn that corner up and then all of a sudden they're all facing in the up direction. So that last one is where I screwed up because I realized that I was looking at it from the wrong perspective and I was looking at it like this. Okay, so it was upside down but in actual fact I just had to turn it over. Um, this is the only one that you can actually do that with so you just be very conscientious that you are looking for that. So let's uh, just uh, work on getting these um, stitch markers into place again. Even though we're done the rings it's easier to still continue. So remember skip over to 10. So this is the corner here. So and I can tell that because that's where stop and start. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and see it's laying over top of this ring anyway. So I'm just going to just maintain that. Okay, so I'm just letting it fall where it's gonna fall and I'm going through the other, other one where the stitch marker is and I'm pulling out that stitch marker now 
and I'm gonna pull it through both. So even though all the rings are done it's still better to move these stitch markers now because the border will be a lot easier because you don't have to count. Okay, so you got the one done. Okay, so you can see that it's starting to look great and this side needs to get done. So again counting over to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. I see that it's underneath this ring so I'm still gonna come up underneath this one. Come into this stitch marker here and then pull that stitch marker out and pull through both. So what's gonna happen now is that you have all your stitch markers in. You can see that the, the Celtic knot has been done right in the middle. So this is kinda what it's looking like at this point point. and because you have all the stitch markers in you're not gonna screw up on uh, where all the rings are gonna fall into place and now it's just a matter of tracing the border. You can see the corners here where I've, wherever you stopped and started and then you can see where the stitch markers are to where you're going to do the attachment. So if you look at the other one here you can see here's the corners and here's where the attaching is where the stitch markers currently are. So let's begin to do the border as per the instructions it says to start on ring number four. But can I let you on a little secret? Because we've already have attached these here it doesn't matter which corner you start on. It really doesn't. Um, it's when it's the, the instructions never said to put all these stitch markers in. Therefore it's trying to get you to do your orientation which makes total sense. So here is uh, the fourth one right here and I'm just gonna, I, I can follow it at this point but I can just slip in my hook, grab on my new yarn and we're going to do a slip stitch. So just bring it in. Okay and we're going to create the corners first. So how we do that is that we are going to chain one and then one single crochet into the same spot just like that. We're going to chain two, one and two and one single crochet into the same spot. Okay so that is the absolute corner made. There's a corner gap made and then what it's going to tell you to do is that it's going to tell you to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay so we got our eight and remember what it said. It says to skip the nine and go to the tenth but here's the thing. Because you already have it um, here all you just need to do is just slip into that stitch marker for the one ring and continue to slip stitch to the other ring where that same slip, um, stitch marker is and then that's where you're going to single crochet. And then once you have that in you can safely remove that stitch marker out. You don't need it anymore. See you don't need to do all that counting that it's requesting you to do. So we're going to then chain eight again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and we're gonna come to the next corner which is the start, start and stop of the ring and we're going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the same spot. Okay, see how much easier it is because you don't have to count. You can just look for the stitch markers. So let's begin another side. So we're going to chain eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Single crochet exactly where those stitch markers are. So you're gonna go through the one ring and then going through the stitch marker on the other ring. So the same stitch and do a single crochet and then pull out your stitch marker once you're satisfied that's safely in. That's out. Then you're going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Again come to the next corner and just go into the corner stitch and single crochet and chain two, single crochet, same stitch. Okay we're moving to the next uh, side so it's chain eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Right where you have the stitch markers again going into the first ring and then go into the second just like there and single crochet that and then remove your stitch marker out. Got it just like that. Pull everything tight again and then chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Okay the next one is a corner. 
So going to the corner one, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Okay, you're going to another side. So let's do this. It's chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Again, this is your, I think your final one. So just right where the stitch marker is in the front one, stitch marker is in the second. Okay, single crochet. Remove out that stitch marker now. There you go. Okay, and then we're going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we just join it to the beginning single crochet that we started with over here. So that's how we go all the way around on this one. And again, because I already had my stitch markers in, I can safely go in into everything and it just starts to look all good without having to recount and really try to really fight with these, uh, these rings in order to make sure they're sitting properly. Let's begin round number two of the border. And again, it's very, very simple. And all we're just gonna do is into the chain two space, we're just going to slip stitch first to begin and then chain two, one and two, and then one half double crochet into the same uh, chain two space. But we are gonna turn a corner. So what we're going to do then is that we are going to chain two, one and two, and then we're going to put two more half double crochets into the same space. So the only compli complicated thing is, is that you have a single crochet here and a single crochet here. You just have to fill in everything. So you're going to put one half double crochet into the first single crochet before going into that chain eight space. And in the chain eight space, it's asking you to do 10 half double crochets. So that was one, two, three, and four, five, six, and seven, and eight, nine, and ten. And then you're in the middle, okay, on the side. So you're gonna go into that single crochet for a half double crochet. And then you're in the chain eight space over here. So again, another ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And before you go to the corner, you have to put in one half double crochet into the first single crochet that you run into. And then you're into the chain two space right here. And there's going to be two half double crochets chain two and two half double crochets again to turn that corner. Like so. So when you begin this side again a half double crochet in the single and then there will be ten a half double crochet in the single and then another ten. And so I'm gonna have you do that on your own and you can see this is what it's looking like at this point. When you come all the way back around don't forget to get that final half double crochet into the first single crochet and then just join it to the top of the chain two that you started with. So this is what it looks like at this point. You can see that it's starting to really come together. So the next round is really simple. We're just gonna simply chain up one and then we're gonna put one single crochet into each one of the half double crochets around except for the corners. So it just is just as um, we're doing a single crochet first. Now here's a corner so you're always gonna put in three uh, single crochets into the corners. And then we start on the immediately in the next uh, side again and then we just half double or sorry we just single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. So just be very conscientious of the corners as you go. Now if you're doing this as an afghan square or anything that you want to attach more squares to it this is the final round for you and in the next round when we come back we're going to be doing the, the crab stitch or the reverse single crochet in order to really finish this off nicely in order to do that. If you do the reverse uh, single crochet it would be really hard to attach it to a neighbor. So if you're doing this for any other projects um, that you want to attach with this is where you're going to stop on this particular round. 
Okay, and coming all the way back around, I'm just still single crocheting into every one except for the corners. I did three and now I'm on the last stitch so I just want to join with the beginning like so. So if you're doing anything else for this except for, uh, except for a dishcloth or you want to attach it to a neighbor, this is where you're going to stop. But for those that want to finish it off and all the rings do sit flat once you get it going as well. Once it does like that, let's see. Isn't that kind of cool? So now we're going to do the reverse single crochet and let me show you how to do that first. To do the reverse single crochet, it's also called a crab stitch that you want to literally come into the stitch so from where you came, so normally you would just go always in the same direction. This time you're gonna go backwards. You're gonna, you're gonna go from the direction that you just came from. So you're just gonna go this way. So to do that, we're just gonna come to the next stitch in behind and just go in and grab this yarn and pull through and then pull through two. Okay, so that's a single crochet but in the reverse. So instead of moving forward, we're going to move backward. So we're gonna come to the next one behind, just in and pull down Okay, and then pull through. Okay, so we come to the one in the back, pull through. You got two on the hook, pull through. So you just continue to do that all the way around. You will notice uh, if I'm just gonna be a little more detailed, when you go in and you pull this one, you pull down. So this yarn is actually the first one there, the first loop and then the other one, the uh, loop there is the actual original. So it makes it appear um, to be in reverse and what it does is that it gives it a beautiful uh, ribbing effect on the outside of your cloth, your dish cloth and you just continue to do that. So on the corners, it doesn't matter what you just do. You just have to make sure every single crochet around is getting a reverse single crochet including the corners. So you just have to follow it stitch from stitch all the way around and when you come back, uh, we're gonna be all the way, when I come back, I'm gonna be all the way done and uh, you can pretty well whip through the, the single crochet in the reverse pretty quickly once you get the habit of doing it. It is kind of uh, backwards from what we're used to. So if you've never done this before, it may take you a little bit longer. Okay, so when we come back, I'll have this done and we can just examine our work and then move along. Once you get all the way back around, you're just going to fasten off like I've showed you already just with the darning needle. It does a nice a great little finish. Make sure you go all the way right to the starting just like so and I'm just going to cut my yarn and I'm gonna grab a needle off camera uh, to be able to fasten that in. So here's one last tip before I leave you for today. So what's gonna happen is that the rings are now uh, set into place just like you see here. Now if you are more comfortable and you want to put in a little stitch, you can put a little stitch so that all of the, the rings are going to be non-movable right in the middle. That's a choice that's completely up to you and this actually works out to be really quite nice uh, once you get it. So that's for the instructions. It says to steam it but you can also wet it as well and then it'll take its proper shape and if you want to fasten everything down right in the middle then you don't have to ever worry about these rings ever coming out of alignment as well. So this is how you do a dishcloth and this is a Celtic knot square and this turns out really amazing. My other sample I, I did last night, I was really excited about it as well and you can use any color that you wish and you can even change the colors of your rings. You know the creativity is up to you. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the, the Yarn Inspirations as well as the crowd.com. When I come back in just a few seconds, I'm going to show you what these look like from a top angle looking down.